Hello and welcome back to a very balmy day on Vancouver Island. It is June the 8th. It's June the 8th today and it's about almost 7 in the evening and we're gonna do a little vegetable garden update. There's been some good news, some bad news, and we're gonna plant some new seeds. Let me show you what's going on, particularly in the world of watermelon and pumpkin. Today is Garden Tour Saturday. It is hosted by the one and only Grandma Sandy. And the other participants are Pat Patricia and Cube and Sir Surefolk Susie. Did I get it right this time? I'm determined by the end of the season to get your channel name correct. Go check out these lovely ladies. You will not be disappointed. First off, this guy is attempting to break into my pumpkin Big Macs. This is proof for all the people that don't believe he eats my pumpkins right here. Zipper, this is not appropriate. That is plenty for one dog who should not be nibbling on pumpkin plants. He likes eating pumpkins. There's a little puppy. It was recommended that he eat pumpkin puree with his kibbles and we did give him that for a while. <clears throat> Zipper. No, bad boy. Look at how he just damaged my pumpkin Big Macs. That is not appropriate, sir. I tried to protect my pumpkin Big Macs and I swear he's doing this just because I started filming. He loves being on camera and I think this is entertainment for him, but this is not the kind of entertainment I'm trying to create damaged pumpkin plants. So this is Pumpkin Big Macs. Overall, aside from the nibbler, it is doing pretty well. These are the pumpkin plants I'm attempting to grow from Mary's Heirloom Seeds for her Grow a Giant Watermelon and Pumpkin Contest. And very ambitiously attempting to grow the biggest pumpkins and watermelons in the entire world. Fingers crossed, that's very ambitious, but we're giving it a try. So this is how my two pumpkin Big Maxes are doing. I attempted to protect them with this makeshift fencing material and garden decor. It partially worked, but clearly he still has access. So maybe didn't work as well as I was planning or hoping. So in my last video, I was experimenting with mulches and I used a mystery substance from the ocean. I will link that video in the cards and description. This pumpkin Big Macs was not mulched with it. This one was, let's see if I can show you the ground. I'm going to show you the third pumpkin Big Macs that I have that has a bamboo mulch and compare the difference between this particular one with the mystery substance from the ocean and the bamboo mulch. Here we are on the other side of the garden where I originally planted Dill's Atlantic Giant, but this is a pumpkin Big Max right here. And although it's alive and it's doing okay, it's not, dear, it's not doing nearly as well as my other mulched pumpkin plant with Mystery Ocean <laughs> Beach Mulch. So, I mean, it's okay, it's, it's thriving, but the growth is nowhere near what my other one is. So I do think that could be related to the mulch. I might even discard this and go harvest some more mystery mulch from the beach because I think we're getting good results from my mystery beach mulch. Next, we're headed into the watermelon quadrant and I'm gonna show you my mulching results from the watermelon. Starting with this man getting into mischief. Hey, Zipper, no, 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 you need to exit. Exit the garden. I can't show them when you're here. I cannot show them that action in the garden when you're right in front of me. You need to go and exit, my friend. Exit the garden. Zipper, exit. 
Exit the garden, mister. Good boy. Back to business. This section here, all of my tags are falling apart and disintegrating in the heat. These were mini watermelons. So we are in the Desert King watermelon section. He's doing a much more productive job of pruning my kale plant. So that is a, being a good boy. So this is one of my watermelons, a Desert King, that was really in the ICU. It was not doing well. And this is a brand new leaf. It is so healthy. And here's the mystery substance we mulched with. I think this is a success. Coming into my rattlesnake watermelon from Mary's Heirloom Seeds that I'm growing for the contests. Over here, this watermelon is the most dramatic change out of all of them. This one was absolutely, I thought was a goner. And look at this, two beautiful new leaves. And I could not be happier with this growth. And again, this is the mulch. See if I can do a close up. Mystery beach mulch, probably fermented wood chips from the ocean that I found on the beach and some kind of beach sediment. And this is what's going on. I'm definitely gonna go and harvest some more of the mystery beach mulch because I am so thrilled with the results of these plants. Coming a little further into the newer section of the garden, we do have a tragedy, I do have a tragedy to report. Right here, this whole section of watermelon, if you watched several of my previous vegetable garden updates from this season. You will know I had a whole bunch of watermelons here. We had five deaths in one of the previous videos and we have a sixth. This is my watermelon blacktail mountain. I believe this one was from Baker Creek Seeds. And I'm gonna call this a death. I could work on saving this, but honestly, I think it is too far gone. This, interestingly enough, was an area where I did put my mystery beach mulch. So I do find that quite fascinating because this one succumbed and my other ones are thriving. So I don't really know what to think. I think it might be this section of the garden because not a lot is growing in my new section. Potatoes are thriving and I have squash in the corner, which we'll go take a look at now that is also doing well. I did use some of the mystery mulch in this corner on this particular squash plant, and overall it's doing pretty well. The leaves are a little bit yellow, but I'm not too concerned about that. It does have fresh new growth coming out right here. So I don't think it's the mulch. I think it's this section of the garden or it could literally be the blacktail mountain variety of watermelon is not favorable for this climate. Whatever it is, the plant species or the soil in my new section of garden, something does not like to grow watermelons. So instead of watermelon, I have a few leftover seeds from my collection and we're going to replant it with something else of my Big Max pumpkin seeds left. I think I literally counted eight left in the package. So I have three pumpkin Big Macs in my vegetable garden growing well. And I was never gonna plant them in other parts of the garden, but I kind of changed my mind a little while ago. I snuck some pumpkin Big Max seeds into my little pumpkin farm that I made in the front yard that I'm surprising the neighborhood with. I will give an update on that pretty soon. It's doing really well. But I did recently, after I planted the initial pumpkin plants, sneak in a few pumpkin Big Macs into that mix and they have sprouted. So I'm gonna say I actually have five pumpkin Big Macs growing all together and I'm probably gonna plant all eight of these. Maybe, maybe not, but we're gonna plant a few more pumpkin Big Macs in the area where my watermelon passed away. So this is the quadrant of the garden along 
the soaker hose here. This was a honeydew that I put in, very old seeds, they never sprouted. So this soaker hose section, right along the hose, going towards this way where I have only one Dill's Atlantic Giant, we're going to space out to these pumpkin Big Mac seedlings. I did plant a whole pile of marigold seeds. You can see the little label here in this quadrant, not really where the soaker hose is, but in the middle. So if this, if the marigolds grow and the pumpkins grow, then it'll be a big field of orange and green greenery right here. I'm really hoping my pumpkins grow because I do want to fill this section of garden with something green. So let's plant these seeds. Before I start planting my seeds in this area here, I'm actually going to loosen up the soil with this tool. The soil has gotten super compact since I've been walking on this and nothing has really, very few things have grown since I created this part of the garden. So I'm just gonna use this tool right here and loosen it up. Not dig it up, but just loosen the soil. I'm not worrying about digging up my marigold seeds because if they sprout, they sprout, and if they don't, they don't. But this might actually help them grow because it was so compacted when I planted them. And let's say a final prayer for this poor little watermelon plant. Rest in peace, my friend. Rest in peace. <laughs> There are lots of little weed seedlings I'm digging up in the process of doing this. That's a good thing, less weeding. So I've got my soil. It is actually pretty well sifted now. I'm not sure how well the camera's picking that up. I'm going to go ahead and amend this planting area one more time before I plant it up with the pumpkin seeds. I have a couple more bags of manure. We did that when we started, but maybe it wasn't enough. I have some sea compost, and I have a triple mystery blend of manure. And I'm gonna spread it right here along the hoses before I plant these pumpkin Big Macs. of this manure when I pick it up in my hands. It's like hot out of the bag, which is quite interesting. Maybe it's because the weather's been so hot. It's actually not that hot right now, maybe like 24 degrees Celsius. I'm practicing food forest permaculture. Howie, his weed smothering techniques. Just cover them up, but don't pull them out. And we are going to add the other manure to this mix. This is the triple blend mystery manure. It doesn't actually say on the bag what type of manure is in here. This is a bunch of other stuff, but well blended pre-mixed soil to help healthy outdoor plants triple blend manure. That is their marketing strategy. This time I'm using supervisor protection from the get-go. I'm going to put one to two seeds under each of these coverings and see what grows. Hopefully this whole area is a big sea of green and orange. doing this one-handed so I only want two seeds at a time and I want them right along my soaker hose here we can manipulate it a little bit 
one here and one about here. We're gonna cover them up with a supervisor protection and on to the next batch. So I finished planting all of the pumpkin Big Macs. I did plant all eight seeds, so I have none left in my package from Mary's Heirloom Seeds. And we'll see what happens. Will these newly planted seeds grow super fast and outdo my current pumpkin and outgrow my current pumpkin Big Macs? Time will tell. So here we are, and this is the potato, one of the many potato areas of the garden, and this potato plant is absolutely going bonkers. It is so tall and bushy, and it has not flowered yet. It's fully lush and green, no yellowing on it, so it's probably still too early to harvest anything, I would think. I could probably get some new early potatoes, but they're probably super small still. And at the back here, we have raspberries mixed with tomato plants, mixed with greens. I used living mulch with these tomato plants and they are thriving. The lettuce is also thriving. We've also got some other greens, I don't remember what they are, thrown in with the lettuce and they are flowering. And the garlic, looks like it's getting ready to harvest i don't think this is the kind that gets scabies scabies they're scabies they aren't getting the scabies and they're looking a little brown already so it probably won't be long before it's harvest time and here's a look at my container tomatoes they are really thriving over here they are also interplanted with living mulch greens of different sorts and they're just starting to get their flowers right now. No tomatoes yet, but they are starting to flower. This one is thriving as well. And this one is really thriving. It's almost outgrown the cage. I've got a couple of flower plants here that I transplanted from my rock garden. And some of these I did buy, but most of them I transplanted. Some of the other highlights in the vegetable garden right now, my sunflowers right here are really starting to take off with their growth. I actually have a ton of sunflowers, some big, some small, interplanted with lettuces and cucumbers. And really throughout the whole garden, there's a whole pile of sunflowers here, there, and everywhere, and they are starting to thrive in the heat. My kale plant, this famous one that has been around for a year or two at least, is in full bloom. I initially kept pruning off the flowers, but it just doesn't want to stop flowering in the heat. So I'm actually thinking of making some bouquets. I haven't really done any bouquets yet this year. I don't have as many flowers as previous seasons, but I think I could probably put some bouquets together. So. I might do some bouquet making in a future video very soon. Coming this way, in this little corner of the garden, we have a lot of things mixed together. There are little cucumber plants in here. These are onions. The lettuce is thriving. All of these wispy material plants, there's a whole pile of them. Those are carrots. We've got kale way at the back, a whole bunch of it mixed with garlic. And there are sunflowers here. It's a whole mix of everything. I was trying to grow cucumbers on this trellising system and hopefully they will grow up, but they're so tiny still. There's one here. There's an even smaller one right over in this section. And there are two right beside this steak and sunflower over here. So hopefully as they grow, they will climb the trellis. Lots of bees and flowers on my raspberries. These are very insubstantial raspberry flowers, but the bees are enjoying them. Here's a little update on my potatoes that I'm growing in dog food bags and burlap sacks. They're doing really well. I've topped them up once with more soil and I'm probably, I'm most likely gonna top them up again very soon 
there's still space for more soil in the bags so I think I'm going to do that I have also been harvesting off these green onions these bulbs I planted in grow bags I have heard that if you harvest the greens, the bulbs will get much bigger. So I'm experimenting with that this season. I didn't do a whole lot of that before. So time will tell if that gardening hack is for real and definitely works. I've only grown small to medium onions. So this is my strategy to try to grow bigger onions, cut the greens more often. And let's take a look at our beans. We have a little progression. Finally, these beans that I was questioning whether they were bush beans or pole beans, they have shown me they are pole beans as they were labeled. So that is exciting. They're actually climbing. There's another tendril forming over here. And my marigolds are really going for it. They are putting on a good amount of growth. Here is another rose cutting that I actually forgot about that is in full bloom right underneath. I think this is another hazcat berry beside it and it's almost buried, but it is doing well. And let's check out the alpine strawberries. There are hundreds of them and they are half the size as they usually are. Super, super, super tiny this season. I do not know why they are extra tiny. Like they're normally small, but this is half the size as usual. I do wonder if it's related to poor rainfall. There's lots of them and I have eaten lots, but they are so minuscule. Thank you so much for watching my little vegetable garden update. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future watermelon or pumpkin growing updates and let me know down below what is the most exciting development this week in your garden it could be food or it could be flowers i hope you're having a lovely evening wherever you are and let's do a rain dance for all the wildfires that are burning across Canada right now. We really, really need rain. Pray to the rain gods for us. We are desperate for more rainfall. Thank you so much for joining me today and have a good night.